Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Gitteros Mobile. Now this is a mobile-focused but desktop-supporting cross-platform 2D game engine powered by the Lua programming language, and this is something I've been meaning to check out for a very, very long time. How long? Well, I first wrote about Gitteros back in September 21st of 2012. This is when I did a comparison of the Lua-powered game engines being Corona, Gitteros, Love, and Moi, and ironically I picked Moi of all of them as my favorite and it's kind of the, the least successful today but that doesn't really matter too much all of these you've probably heard of to a certain degree they are all uh, again Lua powered game engines making 2d games and this used to be the way things were back when the app store first shipped a lot of the most successful simple 2d games were actually created using the Lua programming language and one of these game engines now a lot has changed since then back in this day I believe both Corona and Gitteros had a subscription of about two or three hundred dollars or was it a subscription or was it an outright fee? Anyways, they used to just be commercial game engines and that has changed with Gitteros Mobile. So it is now an open source project and it is also free. Uh, so you can grab it at GitterosMobile.com. I will drop a link with all the links down below when I am done. Uh, but what you are probably wondering is why should I use Gitteros Mobile? Well, you're capable of targeting HTML5, you're capable of targeting various different uh, mobile platforms, including the two most important being iOS and Android. Uh, it is Lua powered, so it is is very very easy to learn now I've always been a fan of Lua I think Lua is still one of the best programming languages for a beginner to start with and the nice thing is it's actually adopted and used in a number of other engines as sort of a a scripting language of choice so even if you move beyond learning with it it stays very useful so as you can see engines such as Gitteros are out there that use the Lua language and there are a number of other game engines powered by Lua so it is worthwhile learning Lua in the first place so here are their advertised benefits you can see it's free there's instant testing it's got native speed so it's developed on top of C++ and OpenGL your game will run at native speed and fully utilize the power of the CPUs and GPUs underneath uh, tons of plug-in supports uh, especially for things that some of you people for developers developing for mobile are often missing, uh, especially for in-app purchases, analytics, and that kind of stuff. It's a very mature product. It's been around for probably a decade now. Uh, so the number of plugins available is huge. Um, there's clean old object-oriented approach, full dev set, uh, including an IDE, uh, fast development, and it is cross-platform. Now, when I talk about platforms, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Mac OS, Windows, and Windows RT are the platforms of choice. You want to grab it, the download link is available here. One thing to keep in mind, it's a pretty big download, and I honestly don't know why it's about 900 megabytes in size and then it's, um, when you install it it's about two and a half gigabytes and uh, when you see it in action you're gonna be like where's the space being used and frankly I don't know uh, but another thing about it is it is also incredibly well documented so if you come up here to the resources there is full developer guide and documentation available plus a number of samples to get you up and started so that is another nice thing about a mature game engine mature game engines are maturely documented at least the good ones are so the the final thing to note is, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an open source project. Uh, it is available up on GitHub. Now, the weird thing is I can't immediately tell you the license because their license has a number of different licenses listed. Uh, so I can't tell you which part Gitteros itself is under. These are what all the pieces Gitteros uses are. But let's see if they actually mentioned Gitteros right in the license. No, they don't. So I have no idea what source code license this actual source code is under. I can tell you that it is, in fact, open source. but uh, yeah. So anyways, moving on, uh, you don't need to build it from source. They do periodic releases. The last one was about a month ago. And then once you have downloaded it, which is available right here, I suppose I should mention this as well. It is available for every platform. So Windows XP, Mac OS, Linux, and even Raspberry Pi. Uh, you do need to have OpenGL 3.0 or better support, which is pretty much OpenGL from the last 10 years. Uh, and then once you launch it, it loads like this. Your typical editing environment. Uh, you come on in here, you can create a new project. We'll do that a very, very briefly at the end. Uh, but here, I'll just go ahead with one of the examples so we can see it immediately. So let's fire up an example project. You see over here all of the various different files that go together to create it. So uh, images, you see a preview of the images up here. Uh, for those of you that are all about your dark theming, don't worry, you can also load UI themes here. So for example, we can do Metro Dark and open that. Oh, wait, it's here. Uh, Metro dark. There it is. Open the theme file. And there you see. So you can see the editor in a dark theme if you're one of those people that likes to squint. I've never really understood the dark theme thing, but I know 90% of you disagree with me on this one. So you'll be happy to know you can theme things. It does make things occasionally a little bit ugly. I'm going to actually go back to the OG theme. 
Um, I don't actually know what the OG theme is. Okay, I guess I should have paid attention to that. I'll, I'll leave it alone then. Um, so here we go. Uh, you've got all the various different projects that go together to make up your project. You can add plugins right here. As you can see, there are an absolute ton of plugins uh, for various different things, uh, microphone control, uh, various different app stores or um, monetization and there's a generic ads interface available right here that runs on all platforms i know that one for a lot of people monetizing mobile games that's how you go about doing it so it is all available via different plugins we don't need any plugins for this particular example here is our source code it is in lua file format now this editor isn't bad you get some code completion you also get inline error sometimes so this is really annoying because it'll pop up an error and still focus while you're still typing code but as you'll see here you get a degree of code completion. Uh, personally, if I was going to develop in Lua using Gitteros, I would also check out Zero Brain Studio. Uh, that's B-R-A-Y-N-E, I believe is how that's spelled. Uh, but it is an excellent one, and it has uh, integrated debugging support step-by-step -step for Lua projects. So if you're more interested in a different coding experience, do check out Zero Brain. So there it is. There's your code. You compose it right here. It's pretty straightforward and simple. When you are ready to run, you can come up here. Uh, so we've got the player, and this is probably where Gitteros really kind of shines, to be honest, is in the player support. And this is a lot like App Game Kit, one of its major strengths. So you can fire up the player, and there you can see, it's the first time I've launched it since this install. And it is simple. So this is a little, basically, virtual machine for emulating the different platforms you might want to run on. Uh, so what I can do is I can come up here and I can change out our orientation or our resolution. So say, for example, I wanted to emulate an iPad. I can go ahead and click that. And now we are in iPad resolution. I can turn this and so on. We can change out the, the configuration and settings. We can zoom in and out. We can fit to the window. We can have it auto scale. Uh, we can change out the frame rate that things that run it. We can use vSync or not vSync. Uh, have the information drawn on top. Pretty straightforward. But now that we've got that up and running, uh, you can go ahead and launch Gitteros on it. So if we could do here to do a play, this is now running on our player. So there is our example running in the player. Um, and where this really shines is this player uh, can be run over the wireless. So you see here, it's got um, IP address that you can dispatch it to. So you can run it on a different machine for doing real-time testing. And then the other thing you can do is get the iOS or Android version of this and actually test your uh, game directly on the player before you do your build. Um, so this gives you a much faster turnaround. You can change things on the fly, swap things out, and uh, do real-time kind of wireless Wi-Fi based deployment instead of having to build an APK, deploy it to your device, run the APK, and so on. So this will uh, really speed up your uh, build times and such. Um, and kind of to be honest, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Now we'll look quickly at the API. Uh, so go to the documentation, get an idea of the kind of functionality that is built into Gitteros. So here is your main documentation, but what we're actually interested in in this particular case is the API reference. So um, you do have basically step-by-step -step instructions on how to do very common things here, how to export to devices, how to export for the various different play stores. We have some advanced stuff, including you can actually write um, shaders, and you've got shader programming support, plus you've got various different uh, video tutorials as well. But where we're interested right now, quick reference is the API. So you can get an idea of the top-level type stuff you're working with. Um, it's uh, you basically using a lot of sprites and stages. So you add you add things to your stage. Uh, sprite obviously is one of the most important classes, but you've got things in here for like gyroscope controlling, geolocation for handling the GPS on your device, uh, movie playback, mesh playback for 3D support, uh, and so on. So you got pretty much everything you would probably expect in an API here. Again, it's mature. It's been around for eight or nine years. So if people have needed it for a mobile game. There is probably an actual class already implemented. And then if you want to see an example of said documentation, here's what Sprite looks like. So you see you got a, you got pretty solid um, documentation. You also see how long that's been around, so how safe it is to use. It there's is um, while Lua isn't really inheritance based, it's table based, so there is an inheritance system here. You can see the full inheritance hierarchy and walk through it using this inheritance from section. All the various different events and methods that are called. And then each one in turn, so for example, set alpha, you can drill down and get more details on it. So this is a very well documented and easy to grasp um, project, of course. And now, uh, finally, let's go back and we're going to do our own project from scratch as simple as we can. So we're going to do a new project, show you how this works. Uh, I'll throw this in, c colon slash temp. We'll call this guy uh, 
actually giddy up that makes sense for me all right so we'll go ahead and create that guy we created a project called giddy up in our temp folder you see here we have our files we can right click and i can uh i thought i could open that way so i'm going to add a new file here so what i want to actually add in is actually i can't do it that way all right so i'm just going to grab it this way i want to grab a font file so let's grab this guy here off my desktop and let's drag it in. I thought there was an opening explorer link. I use so many game engines that the functionality all kind of gets crossed on me. So now we want giddy up right here. And we'll go into our assets folder and we'll paste roboto.ttf in. So now we have a font to work with. As you can see, it should show up under files. Do a refresh. Okay, so there it is. And now what we need to do is go ahead and add a script. So we'll call this guy main. Dot Lua, and now we are going to do a basic um, game loop. Very simple example. So local font equals ttf, uh, tt, yeah, f font new, and it's using roboto.ttf. So we're loading our font, and we'll create it at 64 point. Uh, so now we've created our font. Let's create some text. Local text equals text field dot new using our newly created font and hello cruel world all right so we got our text to display and then now so see that that error that real-time error checking is really irritating so text set position application so get content width so you see you kind of get um you get auto sense and suggestions, but they can be a little delayed or um, incomplete at times. So get content, but as you see, they're mostly there. So we want get content height divided by two. So we're centering our text to the world. And finally, as I mentioned, stages are the important thing. You always have one stage created for you, and this is basically your game world. We're just gonna add text to the stage. And that is it. Uh, if we go ahead and run this guy, so let's launch our player. All right, so now we're running. We'll go ahead and run that guy. Here it is on our player. Uh, pretty simple. Now we ran out of room, so we're, we're not quite as simple as um, centered as we were. So let's rotate that guy. All right, anyways, you get an idea. I'm, I'm not going to undo that. So you have an, it, it is working as we wished. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and say function main loop. Now I'm defining this function. This is my own naming convention. There's nothing special going on there. And again, I hate those error messages because there's no error right now. I'm literally still writing code. So local um, X, Y, Z. There's a neat thing about Lua is you can have multiple return values. Text.get position. So this is going to return three individual values as opposed to a struct with one value that we drill into. Um, all right, seriously, go away error message. Text colon set position X y plus one and then i don't know why i did this but hey i did it so let's going to change the color of our text and then you send in a hexadecimal value so we now have red text and that is the end of our function now this guy won't actually do anything um because main loop is not being called. So now what we need to do is add an event handler. And you're going to use event handlers for most of your processing of, well, events, actions, so on. You can also create and dispatch your own events. So add event uh, listener. And it is event dot enter. See, now this is an area where having code completion would be very handy. And I'm not currently getting it. Uh, main loop. So we're passing in our function to the event handler. So when we get the enter frame call, or basically uh, that things were first drawn or first in, uh, then we're going to go ahead and register our main loop, which obviously is a loop and is going to run forever. So now let's go ahead and run our example. All right. So by the way, you should probably keep the player open while you're doing development. I have this bad habit of closing it every time. All right. So there it is. It is open. Let's put our uh, orientation back to portrait. All right. And now let's run our code. And we should now have red text that scrolls off the screen. All right, back to focus. There we go. And there it goes.
So that is a very, very simple Gatoros project, but it does kind of give you an idea of what you're dealing with, what the coding experience like, what the API is like, uh, what a main loop looks like. As you can see, even if you don't know how to program, nothing here is hard to understand. It's a very straightforward, easy to learn, easy to comprehend game engine. And there is where I would recommend it to people. Uh, if you are looking for um, creating 2D games on mobile platforms and you're not making really uh, advanced games, so right here, you know, you don't have a world editor, you don't have a uh, particle system creator, those kind of things are all missing from here. Uh, your tools are all pretty straightforward. You've got, um, there's a sprite, ma actually they're here. So you've got uh, a font creator, uh, the player we've already saw, the studio, and a texture packer, and that's about it. So you don't have, um, you know, level designer or particle tools or that kind of stuff. So if you need those things, you're doing it in code. But a lot of times if you're creating a simpler game, you don't need the massive overkill of something like Unity or even Godot, frankly, you could find that this is much more simple, bare bones, easy to understand, easier to config, easier to test, easier to deploy. And if that is something that appeals to you, if it's, if it fits the scope of your game, then Gitteros definitely is worth checking out. Now, one of those things you saw when I originally started this entire video is I was uh, originally comparing uh, Gitteros versus Corona, uh, Love, and Lua, uh, I'm sorry, and Moy. And that wasn't really a fair comparison at the time because, again, two of those were commercial. So they kind of lost out on, you know, being charged versus the ones that weren't. Now, since then, all of these are actually still around and they are all actually good choices for Lua powered game engines. So uh, Corona has gone open source. It's also worth checking out as well. Um, it's kind of had a weird history where sometimes add ons were paid, sometimes they weren't. Sometimes they use a monetization system that you have to use their ads or whatever. Like it, it's got a just a more stuff for you to check out than Gitteros does. Gitteros is much more straightforward in how it works. Uh, Love is still around. One of the big weaknesses of Love, going back to then and to a degree today too, uh, is its mobile support was never as good. It was mostly for desktop game development. But uh, I actually did a full tutorial series on creating games using Love. So if you want to check that out, it's out there. And I also did a full tutorial series on Moy. Now Moy was commercially used. And then it disappeared for a while. Uh, and, you know, the development of it has picked back up, but I don't know how effective the community is. But if you liked what you saw today, but you didn't like the implementation, then perhaps it, one of these other ones would work for you as well. Now, another thing I would recommend you check out is, as I mentioned earlier on, is Zero Brain. So there is the spelling, uh, Zero B R A N. E Studio, and this is probably the best Lua powered uh, game engine out there. And you can see it supports Love, Corona, Moy, Gitteros, Marmalade, Quick, Cocos, 2DX, and other engines, and has full debugging support, etc. So if you are looking for a different text editing experience than what you saw today, I would also recommend checking out Zero Brain Studio. Now, the last thing I want to mention before I move on doesn't really have anything to do uh, with really anything else, but I, I love this. And I think this is a feature that is very, very, very clever. So if you want to get, um, when you first go to get Gitteros, uh, it brings you to a page and I'm going to see if I can immediately find it because, um, I seem to be having some loading time. So one second, actually, we seem to be in a Facebook Twitter feedback loop. Uh, so let's see, try that again, see if it actually works. All right, here we go. So I think this is brilliant. And I think everybody else should follow suit here. So it's all donation based. The same as if you go to get like tiled, the level editor or anything else like that, uh, they reckon there's a recommended donation amount and you can say no, zero dollars and go ahead and download without it. But what's really clever here is, so see here, you can say recommended donation of seven euro. And they say support Gitteros with this donation. Well, what's really cool is for every dollar you donate, you can wait behind as in weight as in lift or heavy, the amount of support you want to get towards certain documentation or development or features or whatever. So you see over here, I have so if I have zero interest in more advanced graphics, but I'm all about the sound, I could actually say and basically it turns your donation into votes. And I think this is really clever. And I think more free projects should definitely follow this, this model because it does give you more direct community uh, feedback. It also means that you can pay more to, to vote more, which I think is actually kind of a good way of doing things. Because, you know, obviously you're only going to put up for features, up for voting features that you would support yourself. And this allows the community to support you and also direct your development. So this is a really cool idea. And I think more free open source donations 
nation-based projects should follow this model because this is very clever. All right, that's it for now. That was um, the Gitteros Mobile Game Engine, seven years overview overdue, but hey, I checked it out. Let me know what you think about it. Is it um, a little too dated, too simple for what you want to do, or is it just right? Now, really, uh, you know, when you're looking at mature game engines, game engines that have been around for a long time, you shouldn't look for, you know, new and shiny features because a lot of times they don't really need a lot. It's the same way as, you know, people say, oh, well, nothing's happening with LibGDX or Monogame or whatever. It's, well, they're battle-tested decade-old game frameworks. They don't really need a bunch new added to them, just bug fixes, maintenance, and then new support for new hardware as such as it comes. And that's kind of where these kind of projects are. They've got the full features that you need to create the kind of games that they create. So, you know, don't expect a hundred million shiny new features. And the lack of those shiny new features is what also causes a lack of complexity. So that's both a strength and a negative. Okay, that's it. That's Gitteros. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Do you use it? Are you thinking about using it? Do you use any of the other Lua-based game engines? I love to hear it. All right, talk to you later. Goodbye.